Hey, look who it is. Tesla's chief designer, Franz von Holzhausen. Surprisingly, talking to CNBS, not an automotive enthusiast, not somebody like Jay Leno, but the finance media. Hey, Brian, that's right. So I'm here at the Up Summit, and this really is where you get to see the future of mobility and the fact that it's already here. So joining me now is Tesla chief designer, Franz von Holzhausen. Uh, it's great to be speaking with you. Yeah, likewise. You're getting ready to present here later with uh, an executive from your sister company, SpaceX. What's the message? We're talking about abundance, teamwork, first principles, uh, collaboration, how the companies work. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing to have been on this journey um, with watching Tesla, being a part of it through with Elon and also um, SpaceX, you know, working side by side. So just to be really clear, for those who don't know, there's actually been some direct collaboration between Tesla and SpaceX on some technology, including Cybertruck and the exoskeleton and the material used for that. In other words, there were SpaceX engineers building rockets, designing rockets, who, after a change of pace or a new challenge, and headed over to Tesla to work on Cybertruck. Now, this is very important. As we know, the best and brightest engineers all want to work for Elon Musk. Having a huge pool of gigantic, absolute gigabrain engineers working across your companies is a huge competitive advantage. I'm not sure how many people who've previously worked in the aerospace industry, cutting edge material scientists and so on, are currently working at any legacy automotive companies, for example. Not sure if Franz will get into too much detail about this, but I know for a fact there was a little bit of quote unquote talent exchange between SpaceX and Tesla on Cybertruck. Achieving somewhat impossible tasks. Um, yeah. And it's, it's pretty awesome. You've been at Tesla for, since 2008. You've had a Correct. hand in uh, or have been the visionary, one of the visionaries behind every vehicle or every product really that's come out of Tesla. Yeah. One of the longest reporting executives to Elon. What is it like to work with him, to work for him? How should investors understand his role at the company now? I mean, Elon's just a, a visionary. Um, somebody who continues to just push the boundaries, looking for um, a, a future that we really want to aspire to be in, um, worth fighting for. And I think as a designer in that environment, you know, we have the ability to craft and create like this vision of what the future could be. And we always say like the future should look like the future. And so we're constantly working on uh, developing projects that feel like the future. And I think you can see that in products like Cybertruck and um, the, the Cybercab and upcoming vehicles, even Optimus. Um, so it's super exciting. It's always pushing, um, even even now. From, from day one, it's always been the same. Um, and yeah, it's, it's also incredibly fun. Yeah, and all three of those that you just mentioned are here on display as well. The Optimus robot is yep. actually just right down here in the hangar uh, over your shoulder. How to think about the development of this humanoid robot and what that means in terms of production, especially when Musk has uh, talked so much about how this will be such a big piece of the future of Tesla. Got to say, isn't it nice to hear somebody in the finance media asking reasonable questions about Optimus as opposed to Tesla, gross automotive margins, vehicle sales, automotive only. As I've said before and will continue to say, Optimus at scale will dwarf Tesla's entire existing business and also its future autonomous robotaxi business, making them combined look like a rounding error. I also would like to point out that anyone today focused on Tesla's automotive business as if it's the only thing that matters or as if it's going to be the driver of potential future growth and not just in terms of revenue, but also profitability to ignore not only autonomy, which itself is easily an order of magnitude or more larger than Tesla's automotive and energy business at scale. It's pretty dumb. But to ignore Optimus, which will dwarf autonomy, bro, your picture should appear when anybody looks up the definition of a dimwit. One final point before we get back to France. It's very important for Tesla investors and potential investors to understand that unlike autonomous vehicles, which if things go wrong, can be death machines on wheels, the stakes are extremely high, literal life and death, meaning they must be rolled out extremely cautiously and slowly with an incredibly high benchmark for safety. Because as I said, the asymmetrical risk reward, one mistake in a fast moving high mass vehicle, people can get injured, permanently disabled or worse, die. The bar is astronomically high. Rollout must be extremely slow and cautious until you're absolutely confident, have enough data to be certain about the safety profile. This is not true of humanoid robots. Tesla can roll out their Optimus humanoid robots much more aggressively because if they do make mistakes, the odds of a mistake made by an Optimus humanoid robot 
causing a severe injury or death is close to but not actually zero. Meaning, many investors are going to look to how long it's taken Tesla to get their first rover taxis legally running in Austin and expanding in California. They're then going to go, well, that took a long fucking time. Obviously, the humanoid robot's also a big challenge, and it's AI, therefore it will take exactly as long to scale and roll out as well. Wrong. And just remember, as investors start to nut left, right, and center over Tesla's growing robotaxi business, they will absolutely, no question, completely ignore the Optimus humanoid robot due to shiny object syndrome. Oh, robotaxi. Oh, shit. Holy fuck, they're making a lot of money. Holy fuck, robotaxi. Wow. Do not ignore Optimus. And remember... Elon Musk's 2025 CEO Performance Award, one of the requirements is to have a million of these motherfuckers operating commercially. A million Optimus humanoid robots. Yeah, it's going to be a huge piece of Tesla, but I think a huge piece in, in our worlds as we look into the future. Um, the ability to well, take menial tasks and down. things that you don't you necessarily want to do and have them offloaded to somebody, a, a human that can do that. And so we've been designing the robot that really looks at how humans work in the world. This world is designed around humans. So I think having a robot that can do the things that humans can do um, can really start to take those menial tasks away and enrich in our lives, make our, our lives better. We get to spend more time doing the things that we love. Is Optimus performing the way you anticipated this far along in the journey? What still needs to happen to get it to the point of truly I mean, being humanoid and on factory floors and in people's homes? Yeah, I mean, it's been incredibly fast paced, but the progress is like uh, unbelievable in the short amount of time that the team has been working on it. And we've been growing the team and building the project at the same time. And, you know, I think we're, we, 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 the, the things that we're working on are really incredible. And I think we're, we're breaking ground in this space every day. The team is really uh, energized and fired up. Elon's incredibly involved in this. and. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great project to be a part of uh, and seeing where the, the future of, of humanoid robots is going to go and how it's going to enrich our lives is super exciting. CyberCab is also on display here. Uh, what does the ramp look like for CyberCab and should we expect any sort of design changes or tweaks along the way? Basically what you can see here at the summit is what we showed at the 1010 event last year. Um, and it, it's using the full self-driving stack and capability that are in all of our vehicles. Um, and the car will look essentially like the one that you see here. There's maybe some minor changes, but it's only improvements to make the car more efficient and better. Uh, it's really a two-passenger vehicle, like 98% of ride shares are one or two people. So it really focuses on doing an excellent job at that, um, low cost per mile. And yeah, I think it's going to be a game changer when we, when we get that on the road. We're going to see this. The design of Tesla CyberCab truly is masterful, and I'm not talking about the aesthetics, although unique in appearance, no doubt. I'm talking about what it is and what it is not. As Franz points out, almost every rideshare trip on Earth is one or two passengers at most. It would be extremely dumb if you're targeting massive scale to design a vehicle that can seat more than two passengers. Extremely dumb. Now, of course, you do need to cater to these passengers. Good thing is you can order two CyberCabs or wait for it, order a Model Y instead, or a Model S or an X or a Cybertruck. But a two-seater was so obvious, I called it months, maybe years before CyberCab was officially unveiled, because obvious things are obvious. A lot of people, by the way, they saw this, what, two seats, what if I were to take my family? Not understanding, the vast majority of rides, one or two passengers at most. And like I said, if you need more, Tesla can supplement their fleet with other vehicles like the Model Y, Model 3, or alternatively, you can just literally order two or three or four or seven CyberCabs Pro. In designing a two-seater, Tesla's been able to deliver a vehicle that will have significantly less mass, meaning the energy required to charge the battery to go X amount of distance will be significantly lower than if it was a larger vehicle. Big cost advantage. There's less physical materials, also lower cost. There's less time and mass and cost involved in production, more savings, more cost advantage. And because of the two-seat design, there's an enormous, enormous amount of legroom and a gigantic trunk. Brian's also pointing out its efficiency. You will notice significantly larger rear wheels than front. There's a reason for this. Energy efficiency. This whole thing is just masterful in its design. It is designed to cater to almost the entire rideshare market and Tesla's strategy to fill in the holes. Like I said, they've got other vehicles that'll be able to add to platform, Model 3, white, etc. And to have the lowest, not only cost to produce, which is important, but also to operate. It's so fucking smart. It's brilliant. Yes, it's sleek, elegant, looks cool, but it's a 420 IQ design. Everything that should be there and nothing that shouldn't. Ultra efficient, ultra optimized. Now imagine you're a company like Waymo, who's paying another company 
to produce a high-end six-figure, five- or six-seat vehicle, and then having somebody else cover it in a clusterfuck of expensive sensors with the capacity of producing maybe a few thousand of these per year at most, and you're going to try to compete with Tesla by offering a robotaxi service on the same planet as Tesla who will have a massive, massive cost advantage and almost instant scale relative to you. It's not just Waymo who are completely and utterly cooked when Cybercab enters mass production, although they are cooked completely and utterly. But so too the traditional taxi business, which also includes Uber, Lyft. You can't compete on cost. And the vast majority of consumers, when looking for a service, e.g. transport from point A to point B, care about cost. It's like picking an energy provider, utilities, an internet provider. Most people care about, does it do what I need it to do? Great. Now, which is the best value? So let's be real. Unless you are severely cognitively challenged, if you're an investor or potential investor, looking at what's happening with CyberCab and actually thinking about it, using that brain of yours that actually works, even in the worst case scenario, Tesla CyberCab is going to crush it and have an absolutely ridiculous competitive advantage, not just in terms of cost per mile to operate, but cost to put the hardware on roads, plus ability to scale rapidly and widely. You can't argue this. Cybercabs at scale, money printers on wheels, completely disrupt transportation. And of course, while that's happening, everyone's going to be ignoring Optimus Humanoid Robot. Big mistake. I have said it before, I'll say it again. At this point, it's an IQ test. Sub $30,000 vehicle. And if so, what does that mean for the design ethos of that vehicle? Well, I think I think you, there's, a, there's a walk that we've been doing with, with um, these vehicles and always trying to get the best costs out of them. You know, Model 3, Model Y, uh, we're continuing to take costs out of them, but enrich the overall experience. You see some of the improvements in the recently re- launched Model Y, and it's a, it's a better car for equal or less price than the previous version. And we're constantly looking at how do we get more for less. And that is how, as a business, you win. If you can offer more for less, you win 100% of the time. And again, to be clear, Tesla's CyberCab, their dedicated robotaxi, will offer more. It will be as fast, efficient, safe, quick to pick you up and get you to your destination as any other comparable transporter as a service. Uber, Lyft, Waymo, taxi, whatever. But it will also offer more than a taxi or an Uber because, for example, most people, unless you're extremely extroverted, actually see increased value in not having a driver who may or may not be competent, may or may not be wearing the latest male perfume called Disgusting Body Odor, may or may not be a possible creeper, may or may not be carrying out a conversation to family through an earpiece the entire ride, totally not distracted. And importantly, it's not just going to be same slash better, but cost per mile will be significantly less than anything in the marketplace today. This is very important. A dramatically better service. Point A to point B at least as fast, plus no driver who may or may not be annoying, smelly, creepy, etc. Plus just the privacy factor. You want to get some work done, call your mistress without having any questions asked. Vastly superior service and meaningfully lower cost per mile. Tesla has already won. Bro, it's like watching Usain Bolt walk up to the starting blocks in his prime. You know how this one ends before the race has officially even started. Don't say I didn't warn you. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.